Welcome to the Data Mask. We are the community which believe on free learning. We are here to share the advanced concepts in simple language. For quantitative analysis or when we are moving to the application side, we need to convert these DN numbers which we have got from the electronics to the radiance and reflectance. First, obviously we have to convert to the radiance. The unit of the radiance is watt, watt per meter square per sphere radian per given wavelength. Remember, radiance depends on the steradian. Steradian means the it's, it's an angle. So radiance obviously depends on the angle. It means observing with a certain angle in one meter square area how much amount of uh, energy we are getting. That is the radiance. And it is found that there exists a linear relationship between conversion of DN number and the radiance. That is by gain and bias. Now, how to convert raw data to the radiance value? Since we are taking the example of Lancet 8 imagery, put the gain and bias in this formula y equal to mx plus c, where x is dn value and uh, y is nothing but radiance. Now, the question is how we are getting gain and bias? How we can get the gain and bias? This gain and bias is the property of the sensor. Before the launch itself, uh, in laboratory conditions, we give input of the various wavelength of radiance. To the camera, we give input as a various radiance value. Means radiance R1 gives the DN value D1. Radiance R2 will give the DN value D2. So all these measurements we will write down in laboratory before the sensor is flown to the space. We know that if my sensor is generating the DN value D1, it means my radiance is R1. So that kind of linear relationship we have already established. So it is very straightforward to convert from DN to the radiance. Now coming from radiance to reflectance, now, since there are two types of reflectance, I told that is top of the atmospheric reflectance that is having bottom of the atmospheric reflectance plus some extra path reflectance. Bottom of the atmospheric reflectance is the true reflectance which is reflected by the building, and that reflectance uh, have added the path reflectance and some uh, uh, reflectance from the other source like clouds and all, and finally accumulated and combined called top of the atmosphere reflectance. Means above the atmosphere, how much reflectance I'm getting from the building. Now, this is also a linear relationship. If you know the zenith angle, solar zenith angle, and if you know the distance between Earth and Sun, and mean solar atmospheric irradiance, what it tells is that extra how much path radiance you can expect at a at a given uh, uh, solar zenith angle at a given time. If you know these three parameters, in, in that case we can calculate top of the atmospheric reflectance directly. Mm -hmm. Now here the question comes that since we are having top of the atmospheric reflectance, but actually we want to know the bottom of the atmospheric reflectance because top of the atmospheric reflectance is of no use to us. I only want to know the property of the building with which material the building has been constructed. For that, I need to know the bottom of the atmospheric reflectance. If the building is constructed with some shiny material, then reflectance will be higher because more amount of energy will be reflected because the material is, is little shiny. If material is rough, then the, the reflect, top of the atmospheric reflectance for that given angle, it will be less. Here, we need to fix certain thing. We need to fix uh, uh, before collecting reflectance, we have to fix certain things. We have to fix the solar zenith angle, means what is the position of the sun. We have to fix uh, by what look angle we are observing this building. We also need to fix uh, some environment condition, that environment condition will remain almost constant. So, 
now let us convert uh, top of the atmosphere to bottom of the atmosphere actually that relationship top of the atmosphere reflectance to bottom of the atmospheric reflectance is not a linear relationship so things here are a little complicated you know that to model a non linear relationships we first find out the how many parameters are there and uh, we need to model the values of those parameters the conversion of top of the atmosphere to bottom of the atmosphere is also known as atmospheric correction of the satellite data because uh, here the only difference is the error the atmosphere has introduced in the reflectance there are many ways for calculating one of it is called in situ measurements that is uh, on site measurement there are other various other methods like uh, image based methods using some atmospheric models we calculate and uh, there are well known uh, in this is you know uh, we know that for a vegetation what should be the vegetation index in general usually so we can calculate the indices uh, from our data it means using top of the atmospheric reflectance we can compare those ind indices with the bottom of the atmospheric reflectance indices data and we can establish some relationship there is something called uh, dark pixel atmospheric correction also then using other satellite data using already well known satellite data which provides uh, the data for top of the atmospheric uh, reflectance uh, data as well as bottom of the atmospheric reflectance data uh, we can establish a relationship that uh, in our satellite for what value of top of the atmospheric reflectance data what should be the value of bottom of atmospheric reflectance data means it's kind of modeling the non linear relationship and uh, this is a general problem so one of the accurate measurement is in situ measurements that is uh, on site measurement the meaning of in situ means in situ means on site means we will go to the building and we will measure the reflectance at the building so there are mechanical instruments with which you can measure the reflectance of the object so for the different wavelength for a given solar zenith angle and for a given angle of observation of that object we can measure for different value of wavelength what is the reflectance which we are getting just above the object so that is bottom of the atmosphere reflectance so this is the at bottom of atmospheric reflectance now from the sensor already we know what is the top of the atmospheric reflectance if uh, we are uh, in the visible spectrum that is uh, 4 micrometer to nearly 7 8 micrometer we know that how much uh, top of the atmospheric reflectance we are getting that is from the satellite data now to convert our top of the atmospheric reflectance from the satellite data to bottom of the atmospheric reflectance from the in situ measurement we can use these plots and use this curve like uh, for example for a band of 400 nanometer blue band if my blue band is showing top of the atmospheric reflectance as a point 1 which actually means it is a point 3 bottom of the atmospheric reflectance and you can understand that how uh, why these curves are cutting in between we know that the blue band is affected more from the atmospheric undulations and uh, that is the reason why blue band the blue band got scattered very much so that is the reason why sun looks red when uh, it is near to horizon because entire blue band is scattered so blue band affects a lot from the atmospheric undulations and that is the reason why top of the atmospheric reflectance of the blue band blue band is nearly 4 micrometer higher than bottom of the atmospheric reflectance and slowly obviously it, it will be more so that is the reason why they are cutting if you find this knowledge useful please do share and subscribe the channel please don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will not forget any important update the data mass team works on machine learning deep learning data science and all the area where data mask is required our motivation is to provide you the mask which you can wear when you are observing and analyzing the data so that you can find out the hidden pattern inside the data